So in this video, we're going to take a look at two application problems of linear systems. And the first problem we're going to take a look at is a money problem. And the second one we're going to look at is a mixture solution problem. So the, for the first one, here we have a vending machine contained dimes and quarters. The number of quarters is seven more than twice the number of dimes. The coins have a total value of $20.35. How many of each coin are there? With application question, the very first thing we need to ask ourselves is, what are we trying to solve for? So here in the last statement, it says, how many of each coin are there? So that means we're going to take a look at each of the coins where we got dimes and quarters. And we want to know how many are there. So the first thing we need to do is write our let statements to represent these two variables. So let D represent the number of dimes. And let Q represent the number of quarters. Once we have identified the two variables, the next thing we need to do is write the two equations. Because with two unknowns, we need two equations in order for us to solve it. The second statement in the problem says the number of quarters is seven more than twice the number of dimes. So what we could do is convert that sentence straight as an equation. Now here we're actually comparing the quantity amount. So here we got the number of quarters is seven more than twice the number of dimes. The number of quarters is Q. So Q is, which is equal, seven more, which is seven plus twice the number of dimes, which means we need to take two times D. That's our very first equation. Now the second equation is going to come from the next statement where it says that coins have a total value of $20.35. Well, that means in this equation, we're actually going to compare the value of the coins. And total means the sum, so add all the values up. That should equal to $20.35. Well, each dime is worth $0.10. Cents, so 0 0.10, 0 0.10 times D will give me the value of all the dimes combined plus the value of all the quarters combined, which is 25 cents each. And that should give me a total value of $20.35. Now we notice that the second equation actually has decimals in it. So what we could do is multiply by a value that's large enough that all the decimals will kind of go away. Now we notice that each of those coefficients and numbers have two decimal places, which means it's in the hundredth position. So that means we can easily multiply every single term in the equation by 100 to get rid of all the decimal places. So if I multiply everything by 100, I should get 10d plus 25q equals 2035. Essentially, what we're doing is changing the dollar values into cents so that we don't have any decimals to work with. So now I've got my third equation without any decimal places. So now that we have the two equations, we're now ready to solve. Notice that the first equation actually has already been isolated for Q. So because of this fact, we can use substitution. So what we could do is substitute the equation number one into equation number three. Again, because Q is already isolated, we can easily without doing much more work, take that and substitute it into equation number three. So that gives us 10d plus 25 times 7 plus 2d in brackets equals to 2035. Now with this one equation and only one unknown, we can easily solve that. So let's distribute the 25 into the bracket to get rid of the brackets. So we have 10 times d plus 175 plus 50d equals 2035. Now we can collect the like terms on the left hand side of the equation. 10d plus 50d gives me 60d plus 175 equals 2035. Subtract both sides by 175. That leaves me 60D on the left-hand side, and the right-hand side simplifies to 1860. Divide both sides by 60, therefore D equals to 31. 
That means we know, based on solving the systems currently, that we have 31 dimes. Now, we're not done yet because the question asks for how many of each coin are there. So now that I know there's 31 dimes, I still need to look for the number of quarters. But looking back at equation number one, we know that Q equals to 7 plus 2D. So what we could do is substitute this D value back into equation number one. Q equals 7 plus 2 times D, which in this case is 31 dimes. Simplify and evaluate. We get 69 quarters with a final statement. Therefore, there are 31 dimes and 69 quarters. And you can always simply check by subbing in those values or evaluating to see if that would actually give me $20.35. Now moving to the next question here. So a chemistry student was asked to make 100 liters of 48% alcohol solution by volume by mixing 40% and 60% alcohol solutions by volume. How much of each must the student use? So imagine we've got two bottles here. One is with 40% concentration and one is 60% concentration. So the question is, I want a total bottle of 100 liters, but I want the solution to have a concentration of 48%. How much of each of those that currently I have do I need in order for me to mix that percent concentration? Again, the first thing we need to figure out is what am I solving for? Well, the question is how much of each, each meaning how much do I need from the 40% solution and how much do I need from the 60% solution? So that's going to be my start with the let statement. So let x be the amount of 40% solution and let y be the amount of the 60% solution. Now sometimes for some people it's easy to just jump right into the equation, but sometimes having a chart might be helpful. So this is what I'm going to try to do here. In the same way, I'm going to compare the two things, the quantity versus the value. And in this case, the values are concentration. So the first amount is the 40% concentration solution. That's my first bottle. And I've got the 60% solution, my second bottle. And this is going to be my final solution column. And ultimately, I want the final solution to have a concentration of 48%. Now the first row I'm going to take a look at is well, what is the amount that I'm looking for? What do I need from each of those bottles to get my final amount? So this is my quantity I'm focusing on. So since we let x be the amount of 40%, I can put x in this first column underneath the amount. And I can put y as my 60% solution. That's the amount that I need. And a final amount of solution we want is 100 liters. Now the tricky part is the second equation here. Well, the second equation we're looking for is how much is that concentration? We're really looking at how much alcohol amount am I actually going to have in that solution? Well, if I have X amount of 40% solution, then 40% of that amount will be alcohol amount. So I can just turn that of means multiply so I can get 0 0.40 times x. Well, why is it a decimal? Because 40% to use it in math, we have to first convert it to a decimal. So 40% is equivalent to 0 0.40. So I could take that to multiply by x. I'm going to do the same thing in the second column. 60% of the solution is going to be alcohol content. So in this case, how much alcohol content am I going to have with y amount? That will be 0 0.60 times y. And final, last box there, we want a final solution with 48%, but the amount is 100 liters. So what we need to do, that final amount of alcohol amount in the solution is going to be 48% of the 100 liters that we have. And with that, we can 
actually evaluate that to a value of 48. Now, because we're taking a look at the amount of 40% plus the amount of solution, that will give me the final total. With this chart, it's very easy to see that we can just add the first column with the second column that will equal it to my very last column. So that gives me the two equations that I need, x plus y equals to 100. That's my very first one, comparing the amount. The second equation, comparing the amount of alcohol that I've got, which is 0.40x plus 0.60y equals to 48. Again, because I've got decimals in the second equation, what we could do is multiply everything by 100 to get rid of that. So multiply that by 100. So we get 40x plus 60y equals 4800. And that's my equation number 3. Now I've got my two equations. I can use either substitution or elimination to solve it. Let me just rewrite those two equations. Now notice because we have two equations lined up, nicely matching up x and y, what we could do in this case, I'm going to use elimination. And I just have to choose if I want to eliminate x or eliminate y. So in this case, I'm going to choose to eliminate x. It really doesn't matter. So I'm going to multiply the first one by 40, so then my x terms will have the same coefficient. So that will give me 40x plus 40y equals 4,000, and I've got 40x plus 60y equals 4,800. Notice that now that my 40x is matched up, because they have the same sign, I need to subtract the two equation, and that will give me 40 subtract 60y I get negative 20y. 4,000 subtract 4,800 will give me negative 800. Dividing both sides by negative 20, y equals 40. That means I need 40 liters of 60% solution. And if I sub that back in into my first equation, x plus 40 equals 100, subtracting both sides by 40 will leave me 60. Therefore, we need 60 liters of the 40% solution and 40 liters of the 60% solution.